Welcome to the first episode in a Legendarium series about the life and reign of King Henry I of England. In part one, we will talk about how the third born son of William the Conqueror was able to claw his way towards the top of the heap while his two older brothers quarreled. In the centuries that followed the collapse of the Roman Empire, modern England was divided into small realms ruled by Anglo-Saxon kings who had migrated from modern-day Denmark and northern Germany. During the 10th century, the kings of Wessex conquered their rivals and became the kings of all Anglo-Saxon England. However, their power was shattered in 1066 when Duke William of Normandy invaded and conquered England. Over the next five years, he exterminated or exiled the Anglo-Saxon aristocracy and replaced them with his French-speaking followers. Tens of thousands of Anglo-Saxons were slaughtered to consolidate foreign rule. Thus, Henry was born in England around the year 1068 while his father ravaged the north, bringing rebellious Anglo-Saxons to heel by burning their crops and leaving them to starve. When Henry was two or three years old, his father returned to Normandy, confident that England was firmly under the Norman jackboot. Henry's mother, Matilda of Flanders, saw to it that he received an outstanding education, not only in the aristocratic arts of horseback riding and military tactics, but in Latin, theology, literacy, and numeracy. Because of this, Prince Henry became known as Henry Beauclerc, or Henry the Learned. Indeed, Henry was known to boast in front of his illiterate father that an illiterate king is a crowned donkey. One of the chroniclers described Prince Henry as short, stocky, and barrel-chested with black hair. Prince Henry's mother, Matilda of Flanders, gave birth to nine children, seven of whom survived. They included four boys, with one of them, Prince Richard, dying as a teenager in a hunting accident. That left the quiet, scholarly Henry with two older brothers, both of whom were raucous, devil-may-care soldier princes named William Rufus and Robert Curthose. In 1083, Henry's mother Matilda died while Henry was still a teenager. She left Henry, who stood to inherit little, lands worth about 300 shillings a year in tax revenue. And in a sign of the fratricidal wars to come, William Rufus and Robert Curthose seized their younger brother's inheritance for themselves. King William the Conqueror did nothing to stop this, though he did knight Prince Henry in a ceremony held during the Pentecost. And only four years later, in 1087, William the Conqueror died from injuries suffered during a riding accident. William Rufus received England, Robert Curthose got Normandy, and Henry Beauclerc received 5,000 silver pieces with which he could buy land. Henry dutifully rushed from his father's deathbed to weigh out the silver. And after King William the Conqueror died, his servants showed their love and loyalty for their deceased monarch by plundering the bedchamber and leaving the king's bloated corpse on the floor. And by the time of King William's funeral, his body swelled up so much from his injuries that he burst in his tomb, spraying pus and putrefaction everywhere. After the stench cleared, Henry Beauclerc bought most of western Normandy from his brother Robert Curthose, who was desperate for funds to finance wars against his brother, now King William Rufus of England. Henry Beauclerc took the title of the Count of Contenine and made the mountaintop abbey of mont michel his stronghold. For two years, Henry watched his elder brothers fight, 
all the while extorting money from Duke Robert in exchange for not invading from the west while he warred with William Rufus to the north. However, in 1091, William and Robert suddenly made peace and agreed to divide Henry's holdings in the west between themselves. Together, they besieged Mont Saint Michel, and Henry agreed to flee in August 1091 when his castle began to run out of water. But as he left, Henry made darn sure to take the treasury with him. With a small band of followers, Henry traveled the borderlands of Normandy and France, likely supporting himself and his revenue by raiding villages whenever the opportunity presented itself. All the while, he waited for a chance to take revenge. And when his brothers started quarreling again in 1092, Henry used his treasury to hire mercenaries and seize the Norman town of Domfran. Over the next two years, Henry rebuilt a network of supporters across western Normandy by greasing palms with the cash of silver that he had taken from Mont Saint Michel. In doing so, he effectively created a court in waiting and he proved so successful that his brother King William of England chose to ally with Henry Beauclerc against Duke Robert when the two elder brothers went to war yet again in 1094. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.